Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Carrier Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing important current affairs for 18th of April. The session will be quite interesting and important. So do take notes. They will be very beneficial in your preparation. So let's start. First is remember government has extended the deadline for linking the ABHA ID with CGHS ID. What is ABHA ID and what is CGHS ID? First of all, remember ABHA. Ayushman Bharat health account, right? ABHA. ABA is a unique health ID that is based on your Aadhaar card, right? And this will be individual for all the people, right? Once similar to that of your Aadhaar card, all the individual people have their own Aadhaar card. So similarly, ABA ID will also be individually available for everyone, correct? It will be unique for a person. And this will be used to store your health records, store your health records. Correct. This will give a better understanding to the doctors when you go to the visit a doctor and he will be able to easily identify all the problems you had in your past. Here, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare aims to allocate ABHA ID and benefits for all the Indians at every health facility. This facilitates the storage of health records against a unique number, ensuring accessibility to patients and CGHS beneficiaries. Now, this comes what is CGHS? CGHS stands for Central Government Health Scheme. All the Central Government employees, they get free medical services, right? Whenever you want to go for a treatment, right? You do not have to pay anything. All the expenses 
for the government employees of the central government employees will be beared by the government right and there are hospitals that comes under the panel of the cghs and all that medical expenses will be beared by your government only right and this is specifically for your government employees say for example there is a family of four right and the father here is the government servant and he is in central government employee right and mother is a housewife and there are two children who are below the age of 25 years of age so here with the help of the government and job of the father the mother as well as the two children who are below 25 years of age remember this there's a limit right and mother irrespective of the age will be getting the medical benefit of this cghs once the children are above the age of 25 they won't be getting the benefit of the cghs of the father right and vice versa if the students are if these children are they are government employees then their parents will also be covered under this cghs scheme basically it is a health scheme that provides benefits of medical right all the amount that will be uh, used in your treatment will be refunded by the government and even the test you do using this cghs id there will be at the subsidized rates right various medical tests that you will be going through so coming back government has extended the deadline for linking abha id with cghs id now the deadline for this has been extended for a time period of 90 days with effect from 30th of june let's see here ministry of health and family welfare extended the deadline for the linking of ayushman bharat health account id with cghs beneficiary id to 120 days with effect from 30th of june 2024 and here you can see the objective here is to move the link of aba id with chs id is aimed at creating a digital health identification of the beneficiaries and storing their digital health records correct take a note of this important right so here you can see the deadline to link abha id and cghs has been extended by 120 days and the date here now has been extended to 30th of june 2024 remember this moving on next iit madras has launched india's first mobile facility for medical devices calibration i repeat it is iit madras that is in chennai tamil nadu and they have launched india's first medical device calibration facility on wheels this will be developed by iit madras and it is under anai varukam iitm that is that means iitm for all initiative right under this anai varukam in iitm initiative that means iitm for all here iit madras they have developed this first medical india's first medical device calibration facility on wheels right and mark this definitely the question will be asked that which iit have launched this india's first mobile facility for medical devices calibration it is iit madras this mobile facility aims to provide affordable quality calibration services nationwide that will bridge the healthcare gap between the urban areas and rural areas apart from this this will also help to test and maintain medical devices that are used in wide range of hospitals including those in villages at their doorstep so that the medical devices are working properly apart from this remember good health and well-being this comes under the sustainable development goal three take a note of this also Apart from this, if I talk to you about IIT Khadakpur, right? IIT Khadakpur, it was established in 1951, right? And IIT Khadakpur declared as an institute of national importance in 1956. And as of November 2023, India has a total of 165 national institutes or we can say 165 institutes of national importance. Moving on, one more thing friends, yesterday when I told you about the deputy governors of RBI, there was a mistake there. So remember, these are the four deputy governors, MD Patra, T. Rabi Shankar, Swaminathan Ji and M. Rajeshwar Rao. These are the four deputy governors that you need to remember, right? Take a note of this. Yesterday, there was a mistake when I told it. So kindly correct it, right? Go to the notes that you have made. So just go there and correct these. Moving on. Next is Indian Army's which corps conducted anti-tank guided missile 
फायरिंग एक्सरसाइज इन द स्टेट ऑफ सिक्किम नाउ इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बिकम हेयर अबाउट सिक्किम ऑल्सो द स्टेट वेयर विच कॉप फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेल मी इंडियन आर्मीज विच कॉप कंडक्टेड दिस एक्सरसाइज इट वॉज इंडियन आर्मीज विच कॉप दैट कंडक्टेड दिस एक्सरसाइज इट इज ट्राई शक्ति कॉप्स राइट दे कंडक्टेड दिस एंटी टैंक गाइडेड मिसाइल फायरिंग एक्सरसाइज वेयर वॉज दिस हेल्ड लोकेशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट इट वॉज हेल्ड इन सिक्किम नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन ऑल्सो बी आस्ट इज दैट दिस ट्राई शक्ति कॉप्स दिस इज द कॉप्स ऑफ विच फोर्स ऑफ इंडिया इज इट इंडियन एयरफोर्स आर्मी और नेवी सो इट इज ऑफ इंडियन आर्मी हेल्ड इन सिक्किम दिस फायरिंग एक्सरसाइज एंड इट वॉज द एंटी टैंक गाइडेड मिसाइल फायरिंग एक्सरसाइज हेल्ड बाई ट्राई शक्ति कॉप्स ऑफ इंडियन आर्मी राइट एंड इन सिक्किम टू इट वॉज हेल्ड एट एन ऑल्टीट्यूड ऑफ सेवन थाउजेंड फीट इन सिक्किम टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस एंड दिस एक्सरसाइज वॉज कंडक्टेड विद द एम एक मिसाइल एक टैंक एक मिसाइल एक टैंक अंडर दिस एम और अंडर दिस थीम वी कैन से दिस एक्सरसाइज वॉज कंडक्टेड राइट टेक अ नोट ऑफ इट so here you can see indian army's tri shakti corps conducted a training exercise of anti tank guided missile in sikkim at 17000 feet right and the missile fired detachments from eastern command's mechanized and infantry units participated in this exercise here remember if we talk about tri shakti corps right this is one of the key military formations of indian army and where is the headquarter of this tri shakti corps that is in sukna in west bengal Next, which bank has recently partnered with Shopper Stop to launch a new co-branded credit card? Right. First of all, remember this Shopper Stop. Right. This is a brand. You must be have seen this Shopper Stop showrooms at multiple launch at multiple malls. Right. So there you go and do shopping. So question asked is that which bank they recently. Co launched this co-branded credit card. So it was launched by whom? Tell me. It is Axis Bank. Axis Bank they partnered with Shopper Stop to launch a co-branded credit card. Right. Take a note of this. And also remember, Indian Bank they have also rolled out a co-branded credit card in the month of Jan. And HDFC they have partnered with Swiggy. Right. They partnered with Swiggy. to launch this swiggy hd fc bank co bank uh, co branded credit card here you can see axis bank limited they collaborated with shopper stops limited to launch this axis bank shoppers stop credit card this is a co branded credit card to enhance the shopping experience for card holders both online and offline at an event at the shopper stop malad store in mumbai maharashtra correct take a note of this then apart from this remember if we talk about this partnership this collaboration between axis bank and shopper stop remember here under this partnership the shopper their expensive network of shopper stop right this is a very big brand right and it is a one of the luxury brand then you can say correct and here under this partnership both axis bank and shopper stop they are providing a variants of reward points for the shopping experience this card is also providing an extension of axis bank's credit card portfolio apart from this complimentary shopper stops first citizen club golden glow membership will be provided up to 21st citizen points on shopper stop purchase will be provided then dining delights with easy diner that is 50% instant discount up to for rupees 500 rupees per month for a minimum transaction value of 2500 exclusive offer Via various deals and one percent fuel surcharge waiver on fuel transaction will also be provided here. If we talk about Axis Bank, who is the managing director and chief executive officer here? Amitab Chaudhary. Where is the headquarter? It is in Mumbai, Maharashtra. When did it start its operation? Nineteen ninety four. And tagline here is "Bharti ka naam Zindagi." Next. Next is India's population has expected to have touched 1.44 billion mark leaving China behind and this report was released by United Nations FPA that is United Nations Population Fund and they have released this state of the world population report that was titled 
इंटरवोवन लाइफ थ्रेड्स ऑफ होप एंडिंग इन इक्वेलिटीज इन सेक्शुअल एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव हेल्थ एंड राइट्स दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द रिपोर्ट इट वॉज रिलीज बाई यू एन एफ पी ए दैट इज यूनाइटेड नेशन पॉपुलेशन फंड एंड इन दिस रिपोर्ट इट स्टेटेड दैट द पॉपुलेशन इन इंडिया हैज टस्ट वन पॉइंट फोर फोर बिलियन मार्क राइट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस एंड द रिपोर्ट रिलीज दैट इंडिया पॉपुलेशन इज एस्टिमेटेड टू डबल in 77 years the report also stated that india is the global leader in terms of population with an estimated population of 1.4 billion ahead of china that is at 1.425 billion the last consensus that was conducted in 2011 recorded india's population at 1.21 billion correct take a note of this important and here remember also this is an estimate that you need to remember here this report highlighted that an estimated 24% of india's population is aged between 0 to 14 while 17% lies within the range of 0 to 19 the 10 to 24 years age segment is estimated to constitute 26% while 50 to 64 age comprises of 68% and moreover 7% of the india's population is aged 65 years of above with men having an a life expectancy of 71 years and women at 74 years if we talk about united nations population fund headquarters is in new york usa executive director is natalia kenman and it was founded in 1969 next is sidbi they have signed an mou with jivika bihar and umed maharashtra to extend prayas to rural livelihood missions right i repeat recently it is sidbi what does sidbi stands for sidbi is your small industries development bank of india and they have partnered or they have signed an mou sidbi they signed this mou with jivika of bihar correct and umed of maharashtra right and what was this mou basically for this was to extend prayas this was to expand extend prayas scheme to self help group individual women even in larger self help groups right so basically to extend them at a larger scale this mou was signed here you can see sidbi in association with the women's world banking they signed this mou with jivika of bihar and umed of maharashtra to extend prayas scheme to self help group individual women through cluster level federations what is the aim here the aim here is to develop a market driven solution that will provide long term economic stability to these self help groups cluster level federations then during this pilot phase of project sidbi will partner with 35 to 40 clfs and clfs is your cluster level federations across both bihar and maharashtra state with the target of providing affordable credit of up to 2 lakh rupees to 5000 women entrepreneurs and this money then can be used by these women entrepreneurs to grow their business and these selected clfs will act as a partner institutions with sidbi for this project and sidbi has a budget of 50 crore rupees during the pilot testing phase right take a note of this if we talk about sidbi who is the chairman and managing director here shiva subramanyam raman and the headquarter is in lucknow up right next next is uncted projected india's gdp growth at 6.5% for fiscal year 25 i repeat uncted they projected india to grow by 6.5% in 2024 right that is from 2024 to 2025 take a note of this correct here you can see uncted that is united nations trade and development organization and they projected that indian economy to grow by 6.5% in 2024 as compared to 6.7% that they projected in 2023 right and here only uncted uncted they projected that the global economy is expected to grow by 2.6% in 2024 right and apart from this here if we see you can see here that imf they projected that india's growth 
is to be around 6.8% from its January forecast of 6.5% for the year 2024. Asian Development Bank, they projected that India will be growing by 7% and earlier they projected it to be 6.7%. World Bank, they projected India's GDP to grow by 6.6% and Morgan Stanley, that is an American multinational investment bank, they projected India's GDP to grow by 6.8%, that was earlier they were projecting 6.5%. So do remember IMF, ADB, World Bank and Morgan Stanley's production apart from UNCTAD also. Next, next is IMF's World Economic Outlook was released and here India's GDP forecast was made and it was increased by 30 basis points that is 0.3% and earlier according to IMF India was growing by 6.5% in fiscal year 25 but now they have revised and increased their forecast by 30 basis points right? that is by 0.3% uh, to 6.8%. So IMF, they released their economic outlook, world economic outlook. And this is the report that is world economic outlook steady, but slow resilience amid divergence. And according to this, India's GDP growth has been increased by 30 basis point to 6.8% for fiscal year 25. If we talk about IMF, recently who was re-elected as the managing director of IMF for the second term? Kristalina Georgieva and this will be her second term and each term is of five years here. How many member nations are there in IMF International Monetary Fund? A total of 90 members are there. Where is the headquarter of IMF? It is in Washington DC and it was established in 1944. Correct? Moving on. Next. If we talk about some other organization, we just saw also that Asian Development Bank increased their projection for fiscal year 25 to be 7%, World Bank for fiscal year 25 to be 6.6%. In March, SNP Global, they raised their India's fiscal year 25 growth forecast to be 6.8%. Next, next is Ministry of Law and Justice. They have constituted a six member committee and it is to examine various, various issues that are relating to the queer committee that is your LBGTQ, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, queer and asexual community. Correct. And the committee is headed by the cabinet Rajiv Gauba. This is important. This is a six member committee. This committee will be headed by whom? It will be headed by Rajiv Gauba. And this committee will be giving their report on the queer community, right? And if we talk about this, first of all, tell me, then what is the reason that this committee was established, this six member committee? The main aim of this committee is to ensure that this queer community, they do not face any discrimination against goods, service or any social welfare scheme. Also, this committee will also examine various ways so that the violence, harassment against these peoples are reduced. Correct. And also this will also retain the flexibility to address the issues as deemed necessary. Also, this will be a six member committee that will be headed by Rajiv Gauba. Now tell me if I ask you, remember Denmark. Denmark was the first country to legalize civil unions for same sex couples in 1989 right and these unions they provide rights benefits tax benefits and responsibilities that are similar to those of legally married couples right if we talk about india india as of now does not recognize same sex marriage or civil unions or other forms of partnership as of now correct take a note of this also Apart from this, remember, this six member committee, remember it was October 2023. In October 2023, Supreme Court of India directed to form a six member committee to examine the issues related to the cure committee. And it was for the case of Supriyo versus Union of India. Moving ahead. Next, we are discussing some CCI approvals on 16th of April. Let's start. First is acquisition of PAMP Technologies and MMTC PMP by PAMP Ventures. I repeat, 
सी सी आई अप्रूव द एक्विजिशन ऑफ हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ द शेयर कैपिटल ऑफ पी ए एम पी टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड सेवेंटी टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द शेयर कैपिटल ऑन अ फुल्ली डायल्यूटेड बेसिस ऑफ एम एम टी सी पी एम पी बाई पी ए एम पी स्विटरलैंड हेयर हु इज द टारगेट दैट विल बी एक्वायर्ड पी ए एम पी टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड एम एम टी सी पी एम पी हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ पी एम पी एंड सेवेंटी टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव परसेंट ऑफ एम एम टी सी पी एम पी हु विल बी एक्वा right take a note of this and if point to be noted here is that this is an internal group restructuring happening next next is acquisition of shareholding of thais group industries by protos and paharpura i repeat cci approved the acquisition of the shareholding of thisen group industries by protos and paharpur and protos are the sole selling agent of the this group industries and it is acting as an agent for the companies that manufacture equipment machinery and raw materials in various sectors such as steel cement sugar and other industrial products next we are talking about nigeria nigeria became the first country globally to launch men 5 cv this is a meningitis vaccine that will be that was recommended by who so i repeat men 5 cv remember this is a vaccine that is a meningitis vaccine that was recommended by who and first country who became the first country globally to launch this men 5 cv it is nigeria right first country to launch this new vaccine called men 5 cv recommended by who to protect people against five strains of me meningococcus this is a variant of meningitis only right and that has causes the meningitis disease and here men 5 cv potentially paving the way for who's goal of eliminating meningitis by 2030 right take a note of this then the vaccine and emergency vaccine activity uh, vaccination activities they were funded by gavi the vaccine alliance which supports the routine vaccination against the meningitis in lower income countries the new vaccines was a collaborative effort between path that is program for appropriate technology in health and serum institute of india correct and if we discuss about men 5 cv remember this is recommended by who and this protects people against against the five strains of meningitis that is a c w y and x bacteria moving on next who won the singles title at the monte carlo masters 2024 atp 1000 event so tell me who won it first we are talking about men single title so stefanos sitsipas right stefanos sitsipas he is a greek player and he has won the men single title at the monte carlo masters 2024 he defeated norway's kasper rudd he defeated kasper rudd and kasper rudd is of norway correct and remember this marks the stefanos sitsipas third monte carlo master title one he earlier won this in 2021 then he won it in 2022 and now he won this in 2024 correct then remember this monte carlo masters this is 117th edition of this monte carlo masters that is also your rolex monte carlo masters and this was held at the monte carlo country club in france it was from 6 to 14th of april right apart from this if we talk about who won the double title men's double title it was won by alam sanders alam sander gilly and your zoran vlegen right they have won the doubles masters title of the monte carlo masters 2024 right take a note of this important so coming back and you can see greek tennis player stefanos Sitsipas won the men single title at the Monte Carlo Masters defeating Norway's Kasper Rudd and this marks Stefano Sitsipas third Monte Carlo Masters title he previously won this in 2021 and 2022 right next here you can see this Monte Carlo Masters it was the 117th edition 
held in France from 6th to 14th of April. And if we talk about Stefanos, with this win, Stefanos became the fifth player to win three or more Monte Carlo titles, joining Spain's Rafael Nadal, who won 11 more, uh, who won 11 Monte Carlo Masters title. Then second is Sweden's Jean Borg of with three. Then Austria's Thomas Muster three. And if we analyze the information given above, we can conclude that Rafael Nadal holds the record for winning the most number of Monte Carlo Master single title and he won a total of 11. Correct. And here you can see Stefanos, he have won 3 and this was his third. And with this win, remember Stefanos as of 15th of April is ranked 7th on the PIF ATF rankings. Then if we talk about Miami Open. Who won the men's single title here? Janik Sinner. Right? Janik Sinner, he won the men's single title in Miami Open. Similarly, if I ask you about who won the Qatar Open, ATP 500 series men's single title here. So for Qatar Open, Karen Khachanov. Right? Karen Khachanov. He won the Qatar Open ATP 500 series title. Moving on. Next, remember Sumit Nagpal. He became the first Indian to record win in main draw match at Monte Carlo. I repeat, Sumit Nagpal, India's emerging tennis player, defeated Matteo Arnaldi of Italy and became the first ever Indian to win a main draw match at Monte Carlo Masters. Take a note of this also. Question can directly be asked that who is that Indian player who has won in main draw match at Monte Carlo. So he will be Sumit Nagpal and he became the third Indian to feature in the main draw in Monte Carlo after Vijay Amritraj in 1977 and Ramesh Krishnan in 1982. Also with this win, Sumit Nagpal became the first male Indian singles player to win a Masters 1000 match on clay field. So this Monte Carlo Played on clay field. Correct. If we talk about Sumit Nagpal, his current ranking is 80 on the ATP rankings. Next. Next is who was the former German footballer and 1974 World Cup winner who recently passed away. So Bernard Holzibain. Right, as you can see him in the picture, he's a 1974 World Cup winner, Bernard Holzibain. He recently passed away, correct? And here you can see he passed away at the age of 78. He was born in 1946 in Germany and he recently passed away. Next, name the memoir recently released by Salman Rushid, recounting about the stepping. So this memoir by Salman Rushid was named Knife. Correct? Was named Knife. And this memoir was released by Salman Rushid. That means Knife Meditations After an Attempted Murder. Here you can see Knife Meditations After an Attempted Murder released by Salman Rushid, an Indian-born British-American author. The memoir was published by Penguin Random House, which describes how he survived the terrifying experience of being 12 times stabbed during an arts gathering in New York, USA in August 2022. Correct? Then, if we talk about Salman Rushid, right, he is best known for his novels and he received the Booker Prize for Midnight's Children in 1981. Then, he has also been awarded with the Peace Prize of the German Book Trade for 2023. Apart from this, World Hemophilia Day observed on 17th of April and it is to raise awareness about the hemophilia that is an inherited bleeding disorder and other bleeding disorders that prevent blood from clotting properly. And this World Hemophilia Day observed on 17th of April and this World Hemophilia Day, it serves as a platform to advocate for the improved treatment and support globally. The annual observance of the World Hemophilia Day is organized by World Federation of Hemophilia. Then there is a theme here that you need to remember. Equitable access for all. Recognize all bleeding disorders. This is the theme for the World Hemophilia Day. 
and the first ever world hemophilia day was observed on 17th of april 1989 right next so friends these were your important current affairs for the day now let's move to the important segment of our video that is one liners let's start government has extended the deadline for linking abha id and cgsi id and this extension has been till 30th of june 2024 next iit madras they launched india's first mobile facility for medical devices calibration indian army conducted atgm that is anti tank guided missile training exercise in sikkim state india's population expected to have touched 1.44 billion mark leaving china behind according to unfpa report and it is stated that in every that in the next 70 years india's population will double axis bank and shopper stops launched a new co branded credit card and axis bank shopper stop credit card was the name of this new co branded credit card then sidbi they signed an mou with jivika bihar and umeed maharashtra to extend priya scheme to the rural livelihood missions then unctad projected india's gdp growth at 6.5% for fiscal year 2425 imf's world economic outlook was released and here india's gdp growth forecast was raised by 30 basis point that was earlier 6.5% and it has been increased to 6.8% for fiscal year 25 next is ministry of law and justice formed a six member committee to examine issues of the qir committee and this committee six member committee will be headed by whom it will be headed by rajiv gopa then we saw the cci approvals nigeria it became the first country globally to launch men 5 cv that is a meningitis vaccine that was recommended by who then monte carlo masters were held and G greece stefano sitsipas won his third monte carlo singles title bernard holzeben former german footballer and 1974 world cup winner passed away Salman Rushdie released new memoir that is knife recounting stabbing and world hemophilia day was observed on 17th of april so these are your important current affairs for the day friends do like the video and comment below and let us know what are your views for the same doing this will motivate me to make better content for you in the long run now let's move to some revision part that will be very beneficial for your learning in which state the 5th edition of india japan joint military exercise dharma guardian was held in feb so 5th edition of dharma guardian exercise was held where what is the name of the location or the state where this was held the location is rajasthan and it was the 5th edition of dharma guardian exercise that was held between india and japan right take a note of this apart from this who has been appointed as the deputy secretary of ministry of steel nitin jain nitin jain has been appointed as the deputy secretary of ministry of steel next in which city prime minister narendra modi has recently inaugurated two institutes of the ministry of ayush that is central research institute of yoga and neuropathy and nisarg gram So C R I Y N and Nisar Gram, these are the two institutes of the Ministry of Ayush that were launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And where were they launched? They were launched in Pune, Maharashtra. These two major hospitals and research institutes that are related to yoga and neuropathy, correct? Take a note of this, right? They are important, and they are in Pune, Maharashtra. just to make this more clear remember friends this nisar gram this is in pune maharashtra but if i ask about this central research institute of yoga and neuropathy this where this will be this is in jhajjar jhajjar haryana right so take a note of this right nisar gram is in pune maharashtra and this central research institute of yoga and neuropathy this is in jhajjar haryana next which country has recently collaborated with india under the integrated tiger habitat conservation program for transboundary tiger conservation in sundarbans it is bangladesh i repeat bangladesh collaborated with india under india tiger habitat conservation program for transboundary tiger conservation in sundarban area correct then if i ask you friends tell me recently India is planning to launch their own international space station by 2035. Next, 
Feliti Pentila Tio is said to be sworn in as the 14th Prime Minister of Dash country. So, she will be becoming the Prime Minister that is the 14th Prime Minister of Tuvalu. Right? Tuvalu. Next, if I ask you, tell me. Recently, oh, there is a book that is The Great Flap of 1942. This book was authored by whom? M. Padma Naban. Right? Padma Naban. And this book that is The Great Flap of 1942 authored by M. Padma Naban. Next, who has been recently appointed as the Vigilance Commissioner in the CVC? That is Central Vigilance Commission. So, Aretu S. Rajiv has been appointed as the Vigilance Commissioner in the Central Vigilance Commission. Correct. Next. How many medals were won by India at the Badminton World Federation Para Badminton World Championship 2024? So a total of 18 medals were won, 3 gold, 4 silver and 11 bronze. They were won during the Badminton World Federation's Para Badminton World Championship. Where was this held? The location is also important. This was held in Thailand. Pattaya, Thailand. Right? And this was the 14th edition of the biennial biannual event organized by BWF. Next, RBI announced that the interest equalization scheme for pre and post shipment rupee export credit was extended by the government of India till 30th of June 2024 with an additional allocation of 2500 crore rupees. Then apart from this remember Amazon Pay. Amazon Pay recently got the payment aggregator license from RBI. Then Jana Small Finance Bank, they partnered with which organization for digital banking services? It is Dwara Money. Dwara Money partnered or Jana Finance Bank partnered with Dwara Money for digital banking services. Next, which country's Coast Guard Navy force have recently conducted the 16th edition of the biennial trilateral coast guard exercise that is Dosti 16. So this Dosti 16, this exercise was conducted between the coast guard of which two countries or which three countries because it is a trilateral exercise, right? So Indian coast guard, Sri Lankan coast guard and Maldives national defense force. All these three countries and their coast guard together conducted this exercise. What is the location where this exercise was held? It was held in Mali, Maldives. Right? Next. In Feb, CCI approved the acquisition of up to dash percent of equity share capital of Precol Limited by Minda Corporation Limited. So, CCI approved the acquisition of up to 8.79% stake and who will be acquiring it will be acquired by minda corporation limited and who will be acquired precol limited will be acquired by minda corporation limited 8.75 uh, 79 percent will be acquired here then apart from this tell me who has been appointed as the director of skill development ministry tatung padi has been appointed as the director of skill development ministry Next, Manohar Joshi, a former Chief Minister of State Dash State and former Lok Sabha Speaker, passed away. So, Manohar Joshi, he was the former Chief Minister of Maharashtra and former Speaker of Lok Sabha who recently passed away at the age of 86 in Mumbai, Maharashtra. He served as the Chief Minister of Maharashtra from 1995 till 1999 and he was the first leader from the undivided Shiv Sevna Party to occupy the Chief Minister post in Maharashtra. Next, which state government has recently partnered with World Bank to establish a blended finance facility for climate resilience? It is Goa. Right? Goa has recently partnered with World Bank to establish a blended finance facility for climate resilience. This initiative aims to access and mobilize finance to implement low carbon and climate resilient investment in Goa and also work towards sustainable development goals. Next tell me 13th edition of World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference was held where it was held in Abu Dhabi. Then Bharat Tax 
Bharat Tex 2024. This was held where? It was held in New Delhi, inaugurated by PM Modi. Next, which company has recently partnered with five Indian banks? That is IDBI Bank, Indian Bank, Axis Bank, Jammu and Kashmir Bank, and Karur Vesai Bank to introduce India's first virtual ATM. Which is that? It is Paymart India. This partnered with five banks. Correct. And the transaction limit, if we talk about the minimum withdrawal amount is hundred rupees, and the maximum can be two thousand rupees per transaction. And there is a monthly cap of ten thousand rupees for virtual ATM withdrawals. Apart from this, tell me where was the India's first India's first Gati Shakti Research Chair. India's first Gati Shakti Research Chair. was established at where it was established at iim shillong iim shillong next which bank or organization approved the loan of 23 million dollar to india for india promoting research and innovation through development of finance institute at jift city i repeat Which bank approved the loan of twenty three million dollar for the India promoting research and innovation through development of fintech institute at Jift City? This will be Asian Development Bank (ADB), right? Asian Development Bank has approved this amount. So, right option here becomes option two, and the project here aims to construct a sustainable and climate resilient international fintech institute that will be in the Jift City, and Jift City is in Gandhi Nagar. Gujarat Correct then next tell me who launched investor information and analytics platform investors information and analytics and analytics platform this investors information uh, investor information and analytics platform was launched by Rajiv Chandrasekhar Next India ratings and research private limited Lowered India's GDP growth forecast for fiscal year twenty five two dash. So, according to them, India's fiscal year twenty five will be in India. India in fiscal year twenty five will be growing by six point five percent. This data was released by Indra, that is India Rating and Research, correct? And they have increased the India's GDP forecast for financial year twenty four. If we talk about It has been increased to six point nine percent. That was earlier six point seven percent. It has been increased to six point nine percent. But if we talk about the third quarter of fiscal year twenty four, India grew by eight point four percent. Right. Next, tell me. Recently, SIDBI partnered with which state in order to develop startup ecosystem there? So this is Bihar. Take a note of this. Sidbi has partnered with Bihar in order to develop a startup ecosystem in the state of Bihar. Next is our homework section. First, recently Election Commission of India started the Mera Pehla Vote Desh ke liye campaign with which ministry? Second, as per recent study, which planet may have undergone a tectonic activity 4.5 billion to 3.5 billion years ago? Third, what is bio trig? recently seen in the news fourth recently which south american country has declared a health emergency due to the rising cases of the dengue fever dengue is caused by what don't give me just mosquito name that mosquito also that causes this dengue fever fifth the national institute of ayurveda that is nia sign an agreement with which country to promote ayurveda and thai traditional medicines so these are your five homework questions and i need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773362 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official also students you can use code vikas10 that will give you extra 10% discount on the courses that you will purchase